Now, we know that the private markets landscape has transformed significantly in the last 10 to 15 years. There's a lot more complexity. Fund managers that played in, in one asset class are expanding into others, and I believe you alluded to that, <clears throat> Lee, when you were talking. And we're seeing a more complex structure, semi-liquid vehicles. So this is resulting in more diverse and demanding investor landscape. And so the traditional methods of operations via emails and spreadsheets are really rendered obsolete. So given all of this, what data tech challenges do you encounter on the investment side or operationally? And Laura, feel free to chime in as well. And what have you done about it? Um, so on the secondary strategy, I described you know, one type of deal that we do is LP portfolios. And so there are literally deals we would do. One deal would have 10 funds, and each fund has 10 companies. So you're talking already about hundreds of companies in just one deal. And we do call it 30 deals per fund. So if you look at our last fund, we had over 1,000 companies. Um, and so the challenges of being able to analyze a portfolio, price it, but then the same challenge that an LP would have after they invest in any of these funds and then want to see what they actually own, um, now that their portfolio is not just public equities, but it's a combination of public and private, and then what if an LP wants to actually just understand their healthcare exposure through both sides? Data and technology is going to be the solution in order for to offer really first and foremost transparency into what somebody owns and also kind of uh, 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 accuracy, I guess, of, of the capturing the data because on the private side, unlike the public side, fund managers report in different manners. I mean, there are regulations that happen that try to standardize some of this, but depending on which you know fund manager you're investing with, depending on what strategy, there's just different levels of data and, and data consistency across all of this uh, reporting. So I think when you think about an investor starting with an institutional investor and now more potentially retail investors who just want to see what they own. Uh, that, that in itself might sound like a simple thing, but it's actually a huge challenge. And, and again, on the deal side, as, a, as an investor, we deal with that sort of day in and day out because we need to price portfolios that are hundreds of companies, maybe even thousands of companies. So one of the things we've been investing in, clearly we bought uh, Prequent. Um, that was one of our large acquisitions in the private market technology, data and technology space um, this past year. We, BlackRock also um, owns eFront, and that's one of the largest private market investment technology um, systems that are used by our clients and frankly used by us, the business teams as well. And then when you think about the public side, we own Aladdin. And so at BlackRock, our attempt when we think about delivering investment prop products and solutions to our clients, it, it's clo very closely tied with how we bundle that with data and technology and how do we combine both the public side and the private side to offer a whole portfolio view for our clients. Lee? Sure. So, I mean, you know, <clears throat> the use of technology within our practice has really been focused on building, you know, scale within our organization. Since we have professionals in, in every corner of the world, about 200 professionals in private equity in total. Our focus has been looking to apply generative AI within our practice. So Schroeder started with its own version of ChatGPT about a year, a year and a half ago. Uh, that's now been you know, rolled out to all the employees. It gets updated every quarter. You utilize it for you know, building slides. You, you pop in the data or, or the content that you can attach. Uh, but we also launched a product we call Gaia, which is for private equity specifically. And here it's for the analysts and the associates to throw all the due diligence at the, at the application and spit out the first version of a, of a memo that would go to the investment committee. It's, uh, it's version one. It provides a lot of efficiencies as a version one. It requires a lot of checking by the analyst, but you can see how it can really take a template uh, report that would go to the investment committee and allow that analyst and associate to really focus on, so does this sound right? Uh, as opposed to you know, copy, pasting, formatting, spell checking, so on and so forth. They're really focused on, am I getting the right content into this memo? and portraying the right message to the investment committee and really reducing their time wasted in building that memo. And hopefully in you know, version two, version three, it becomes much more intelligent and in helping us you know, develop further analysis. So for us, you know, technology application is about uh, uh, scaling the organization. And when it comes to the portfolio itself, it's about taking these applications and disseminating our portfolio information you know, not just the team that's focused on it, but the entire private equity platform globally, and then making it available to our clients, which obviously are focused, are located in all corners of the world. 
And so really, it's all about scale and uh, efficiency for us. Okay. Oh. Uh, I'll also note that having that information on the portfolio companies also helps with respect to regulatory compliance, particularly where there's a foreign person, if they're making an investment in the GP or if it's a fund of one, CFIUS and the government would look at rights through to the portfolio companies. So as CFIUS is increasingly digging into these transactions, we're having much larger due diligence exercises where we're trying to understand whether there's sensitive technology or sensitive data in US port codes such that the transaction may need to file, or in some cases we reduce some of the rights to prevent having to file and allow the transaction to move more quickly. And I, I think this is this entire part is, is really kind of core to our thesis, and which is all this stuff is becoming more complex and you can't use email and spreadsheets to manage it anymore. Like right? that's just the fundamental thing. And and um, and technology companies that can provide these solutions, uh, even to uh, on the CFIUS side, that can, how do I keep all that stuff and, and report it in a consistent way, uh, as opposed to having to scour through a bunch of emails and, and cap tables and things like that, um, is, is gonna become more and more important. And as larger managers are looking to add strategies, uh, your private equity fund and you wanna have a private credit fund, your infrastructure is probably not built for that. And you could either build it yourself you can buy something separate or you can build, buy something that's going to integrate well. And those technology decisions are increasingly important in providing uh, what is a more complex product to more customers. And that, I think, is, is what provides also a lot of an opportunity. Um, and the software vendors that can do it need two things. They need technological expertise, but I think more importantly, they need domain expertise. They need to understand what those business problems are and not to deliver a technology, like I can't just like, deliver, hey, I've got AI, do you wanna buy it? I, I, need to, I need to deliver, I'm gonna deliver you a business solution that reduces your trade requirements from this period to that period. I might use AI in the background, but what you care about is your trade processing costs went down. Those, those things are, are increasingly important, and I think that's a great opportunity for, for this space. Yeah, I mean, most of what I would say <clears throat> has already been said. I think the one thing that I'll point out is for the public markets for a long time, your data and your data strategy has been your strategy. I mean, I started my career at BlackRock looking at the green package where, you know, they were able to farm that out to pretty much every other asset manager because that's the best way to understand what you actually have and how to kind of analyze your trades going forward. Increasingly in the private markets and not just for financial services, but for basically any business you own, it's going to be even more so that how you handle the data, how you structure it, it's going to directly impact how your business operates. And you know, I've spent more of my time actually digging into those companies that are involved and kind of uh, the companies cleaning, analyzing, storing that data and investing into those companies than actually doing it for my own uh, internal business, uh, right? But that's the benefit of having five people on my team. I can get them in a room, we can still hash it out. But as you try to scale that, and as we try to take the global perspective and incorporate more feedback from our colleagues in Asia or India or around the globe, really how we store and analyze that data and kind of point out those first kind of insights that we could then start to peel back individually, um, that's gonna have a more and more of a material impact, probably not just for me, not just for everyone on this panel, but for everyone in every industry around the globe. 